Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi. Today, our founder, Jack Rosa, and myself we have a very special guest with us, Representative Curtis Bowers, and he is the producer of the movie Agenda, Grinding America Down. You know, this almost sounds too unbelievable, Mr. Bowers, to be, be believed. Um, why would anybody want a government to totally rule over them? Well, I think it's they've learned how to package these terms uh, and like social justice and things uh, the, and through the political correctness movement that sound very appealing to a lot of people. You know, who doesn't want everything to be fair and everyone to have a shot at it and, and that type of thing. Yes, but absolutely. that's not really what they're selling. They're selling that idea of this utopia on earth. But all we have to do is look back to the 20th century and see it's been tried over and over again. And whenever a government is given that much power over man and control of the jobs and the, the things going on, the health care, um, it doesn't turn out good. It never has. There's um, something to be said about uh, uh, people being deceived by what he has just said, that they think it's something good. Uh, back in the 1930s, uh, there was a man named Whitaker Chambers, uh, who was a thoroughgoing communist and wrote a book called Witness. And uh, the frontispiece is all about his family. Uh, he turned against communism in the end. But uh, the point of it all, he was a very uh, highly educated guy and uh, wrote a lot of articles for Time, Life magazines, and uh, was quite smart. Uh, but um, <clears throat> uh, he, he believed in communism ethically. He thought he was on the ethical side. He was on what he thought was a good thing for people. But uh, he was subversive and uh, he was involved with subversive people in the government. And uh, he came to believe that was not the right thing for America, that it was subversive and it was evil. And he turned against it. And uh, he went back to his Mormon, uh, or pardon me, Quaker uh, religion. So, uh, and uh, the book uh, Witness that he wrote is, uh, is a great story about this thing transiting from the time when people could, could possibly, through ignorance, not realize that the package of socialism was a very evil thing. And uh, he turned against it. Uh, so your comments about uh, uh, people believing it's a nice thing, it sounds like it is social justice. It's uh, when you get into it, when all power is taken away from the people and conveyed to the bureaucrats, you know, similar to what would happen with Obama's medical plan, Mm -hmm. That's a very socialistic idea that uh, the government should do that service for you. Uh, right. I personally think it's lousy to have my health taken care of by a bureaucrat. Well, Mr. Bowers, you were speaking to something about health care um, at one of the meetings about a woman in Oregon. Um, would you like to expound on the health care thing, which is clearly in our, our rear view mirror here, our front view mirror for Right. The next year. Well, it's, I mean, it's clear that uh, as you head into socialism, like Margaret Thatcher said, you always run out of spending other people's money. And so you're always tight economically. I mean, we're tight economically right now just with big government. We don't even have the socialism yet. Mm -hmm. And as we add that on, the burden gets so heavy, you simply cannot afford to do the things that need to be done. And so when they take on health care and that becomes part of it, um, they have to start rationing it. And, and anyone 60 and over, they're not going to get any kind of health care uh, because simply there's not enough money to provide that as well as for the five-year-olds that need health care. And so in a moral, morally relativistic society, they just make the choice, hey, we'd love to help everybody, but we can't. We don't have enough money. So would you rather for the 60-year-old to get the treatment or the five-year-old? And then today in our society, most people say, give it to the five-year-old. In Oregon, uh, which is right next to where I live, just two years ago, a lady was who worked for the state and had the retirement plan and on the state health care because they have socialized medicine there in Oregon. She was 60, got cancer, went in for treatment, and they said, we're just, we're very sorry, but we don't have the money for that. You, could, you have two options, either painkillers or doctor-assisted suicide. That's in America two years ago in Oregon. And they didn't. They would refuse to pay for her her treatment because they said we just don't have the money. We're we're, we're broke as a state. <laughs> well, they're running the show, so why would they ever really need uh, sympathy for anybody? They can dictate. Yep. Well, she's already done her 
her required service for her government. She's now on the decline of her, her years. She's not productive anymore. So she's not going to be monetarily productive to add to the whole. Is that what I'm hearing That's right. from you? It, it's all socialism at its root, just like communism, progressivism, Marxism. It is all about the collective. And our founding fathers knew that's dangerous when anyone starts worrying about the collective instead of the individual. America, everything was, all our rights were protecting the individual rights because they had seen in the countries they had come from how when you start talking collective, there'll be individual groups that are going to be abused, whether it's religious groups, whether it's uh, ethnic groups, whatever, that's what always happens. And so uh, that's, that's what will be happening here in America as well as we head down that road because what's best for the collective is not always what's best for the individual. It, so it's worth noting that uh, our rights were given to us not by our original government, but in, under the natural law and religion, mm -hmm. uh, they're conferred, uh, if you wish, uh, or if you don't wish, it came from God. It didn't come from a political Absolutely. party. So uh, they aren't giving us anything that wasn't right. already guaranteed in our original uh, That's right. They were just writing it down to make it clear that we understand these rights are from God, so therefore government is hands off. You have no business messing with this. And just like uh, you, you mentioned, Jack, the... Uh, Whitaker Chambers, in his book, the key thing he said, the battle we are in is very, very simple. It's God or man. It's God or man. That, that is the entire battle. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, say uh, uh, there is a choice here. Uh, you believe in God or you don't. Uh, Hitler and uh, certainly uh, Stalin, uh, Stalin was uh, certainly a thoroughgoing atheist, as is all of the socialist crap. Uh, what happened in, in uh, Russia? Uh, the Russians, uh, communists, they killed off about 30 million of their own people, establishing that. Uh, uh, Mao Zedong uh, in uh, China killed off about 100 million. Uh, Hitler, uh, more amateurish, only killed about 6 million. Uh, now, what is wrong with Stalin killing off 30 million people if you're an atheist? He perfected his power, and if there is no God, what's wrong with killing 30 million people? Two-legged cows, because yes. that's all you are. Mm -hmm. yeah, if there is no God, that's you're a just good. a physical nothing that to be manipulated by people that are smart enough to be in power. Jack, what do you always say, John Adams' quote? You always say this. John Adams? Yeah. Oh, the Constitution. Uh, John Adams said, uh, the second president of the United States, uh, he said, we have given you a uh, constitution for a moral and religious people and it's suitable for the governance of none other. Uh, being an engineer, I'll give it a little twist. Uh, if, and it says uh, in my head, if you want to be a free people, uh, you must be a conscientious people, which means you have to be responsible. And if you're free and responsible, it releases the individual's initiative. That's what American is. That's why we've outdistanced all other countries in wealth and decency. They we're the ones that have propped up the world because uh, we release the initiative of the individual American citizen. Every coach knows that. Have a winning team, you got to have initiative. And uh, you got big initiative if you got a free and responsible people. Michael, I see you wanting to say something. Well, what you're, what you're talking about right, right now is at the root, the, uh, the cause of this cultural uh, war that we are in. Because um, those who are believers and believe in God, we believe in small government. We believe in uh, um, self-reliance. We believe in helping our neighbor. We be, believe in, and I, I'll tell you what, when it comes to health care, there's no way the government can ever come close to providing the health care that a family and a community can provide. Can't do it. It's impossible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In my but business, the, people sometimes say to me, uh, uh, this business is my family. And I, I correct them right away. I said, no, no, no. Uh, your family is your family, not this business. Uh, but this business is trying to act like your family and be decent with you. That's all. But the family is the big thing, and uh, I could talk a lot about uh, the responsibility of the family and, and uh, that particular subgroup of people. Uh, when you're all together, uh, it means that you all try to act ethically or you'll lose okay. your family. Uh, you don't want to run away from your family. And uh, that makes the world run one heck of a lot better. 
and you don't need a government program when you get in trouble because they're going to take care of you as my family did in 1933 when I had a ruptured appendix. There wasn't any insurance or federal government. And my family saved my life through six weeks in the hospital. So uh, you know, the family is the, is the big unit that covers so many of the needs that people have.